All right. If you would please join me in welcoming the governor of our great state, Governor Earl Ray Tomlin. Good morning, everyone. I want to, first of all, get back for the mic a little bit, but uh, thank all of you for being here today as we take time to highlight our state's network of hospitals. I'd also like to take a moment to recognize Joe Lignarton, who is over here, and uh, president of the West Virginia Hospital Association, and David Darden. Uh, CEO of Raleigh General Hospital. We're both we're pleased to have both of you here today, and all of you healthcare leaders from across the state who have traveled to join us today. So thanks to all of you for your continued efforts to provide West Virginians with access to quality health care. Since becoming your governor, I've worked hard to improve the lives of West Virginians and communities across the state, and I continue to make the fight against substance abuse one of my top priorities. Substance abuse is one of the greatest struggles our state has ever faced, and it is destroying the lives of way too many of our family members, our friends, and neighbors. In 2011, I established my advisory council on substance abuse to find more local options to combat substance abuse battles in all parts of our state. We have updated our prescription drug monitoring program, cracked down on the sale of drugs used to make meth, and put an end to doctor shopping. We've invested more than $39 million in state funding to expand local community-based treatment and recovery services in areas across our state. Last year, I signed into law landmark legislation that provides families and first responders with, with access to, life to a life-saving drug, reducing the number of overdose fatalities. In 2015, First responders administer more than 3,000 doses of Narcan, giving those struggling with an opioid addiction the opportunity to get help. Last September, we launched the state's first 24-hour substance abuse call hotline. It's 844-HELP-4WV. To connect those struggling with, with drug abuse uh, to get the treatment they need to find help and hope and begin the road to recovery. We've also launched a new brochure in support of the call line that highlights 150 treatment options across West Virginia where people can get the help here at home with the support of their families and communities. It lists all the services available throughout the state and I, hopefully many of you have seen this and have been able to use it uh, in your work. This brochure is available online and at all of our courthouses, schools, churches, DHHR offices, and libraries in all 55 counties. And with the help of the West Virginia Hospital Association, they are now available in hospitals across the state, providing West Virginians with access to additional resources to those receiving or th those seeking recovery services. Your hospitals have also made it a top priority to establish responsibility, to, re to establish responsible prescription practices for opioid medications by implementing new guidelines in emergency departments across the state. <clears throat> These new standards ensure West Virginia residents have access to the pain medication they need, but not at the expense of irresponsible prescription practices. These new standards and your commitment to helping us in this fight will make a difference and will save lives in West Virginia. I truly do appreciate you taking this important action. And while we've made significant progress over the years, there's still a lot of work to be done, which is why I have introduced two pieces, two new pieces of legislation uh, to build on these successes. During my State of the State address, I proposed a bill to establish licensing requirements for medication assistance treatment facilities that prescribe Suboxone and Methadone. Research shows that these two supplements alone do not support long-term recovery. This legislation promotes a comprehensive approach to treatment that requires counseling and behavioral therapies to be used in addition to these medications to give those seeking help 
the support they need to begin the recovery process. My second proposal expands the Opioid Antagonist Act of 2015 by making Narcan available to any West Virginian without a prescription. Healthcare providers at our state's hospitals know better than most that when an overdose happens, every second counts. This new legislation aims to decrease the number of overdose deaths in West Virginia and requires pharmacists to train those who receive this drug to make sure they can safely administer it if the crisis occurs. It will also help us keep track of who is receiving Narcan to better focus state resources in areas hardest hit by opioid overdoses and be sure it isn't being used as a crutch to enable heroin addiction. Now, I'm confident these new proposals and those we've already put into place will make a difference for so many of our state's families and communities. So again, I want to thank you for your continued support of these proposals. Now, as we recognize Hospital Day, it is important that we also recognize the thousands of physicians, nurses, technicians, administrators, and our dedicated volunteers who make up our healthcare community. While we can bring about change through new legislation and policy decisions, those of you who are on the front lines are the ones who are truly making a difference in our communities. Our state's hospitals also play a large role in ensuring the economic stability of our communities around the state. Hospitals in West Virginia employ more than 46,000 hardworking West Virginians, supporting one in every nine jobs. In addition to hospital, in addition, hospitals contribute more than $9 billion to our state's economy each year. As leaders in West Virginia's healthcare industry, you touch the lives of patients, families, and members of our local communities each and every day. <clears throat> I know the healthcare environment of today presents a number of challenges, but we will continue to work together to ensure West Virginia is a leader in health care now and for years to come. At this time, I'd like to invite David Darden, President and CEO of Raleigh General, to the podium to say a few words. David. As the Chairman of the West Virginia Hospital Association Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the West Virginia Hospital Association, I'd like to thank Governor Orrey Tomlin for joining us today. Also would like to thank all of the hospital staff for attending our hospital day at the legislature. Like West Virginia hospitals, Governor Tobin has a long history of service to the citizens of West Virginia. He began his service in 1974 when he was elected to the House of Delegates. He continued this service in the Senate in 1980 where he was re-elected re each term until his election as the 35th governor in October 2011. Governor Tobin has the distinction of the longest serving Senate president, a position he held for 17 years. Throughout his years of public service, Governor Tobin has, dedicated, has been dedicated to creating a better West Virginia. Again, a similar trait for West Virginia hospitals and staff in our efforts to create a healthier West Virginia. I would now like to ask Governor of West Virginia, Earl Ray Tillman, to deliver the hospital proclamation. I understand that this is your last opportunity to do so, and we want to thank you for your years of dedication and cooperation, and we stand ready to work with you through this session to continue to improve our environment for our patients and communities. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Also, I'd like to now call on Joe Ladochin, a longtime friend and a real advocate for health care in West Virginia. Joe. Thank you, Governor. Um, David said it all. You know, we've been working with Governor Tomlin. It's bittersweet for me personally and professionally because this is the governor's last official role as hospital day at the legislature for us. Um, but we really 
commend him for his support of the hospitals, for his partnership with our hospitals, like the substance abuse issues. And Governor, we just continue to uh, respect and admire the service that you provided to the state and to your commitment to our hospitals, uh, the services that your wife continues to provide in the education. We know the linkage between education and health care. We have to have a healthy workforce. And so all those pieces come together to just say a one big thank you for everything that you've done. So thank you. Appreciate it. Now, gentlemen, if you'll join me in front of the podium, I'd like to present the proclamation uh, naming February 4th, 2016 as Hospital Day in the state of West Virginia.